A prosthesis is much more than a medical device. It also completes the wearer's sense of wholeness. It gives emotional comfort. And so the history of prosthetics is not just about the advancement of medical science. It's a story of human beings who miss an essential part of their self. It is a story of human beings struggling to regain a wholeness that they have tragically lost. The earliest known prosthetic is not a leg, arm or even a fake eye. It's a toe, a big toe, belonging to an Egyptian noblewoman living around 3000 years ago. Now, this may seem odd at first. A person can technically live their life with a big toe. But to Egyptian society at the time, your big toe was culturally important. To Egyptians, wearing sandals was an important tradition. Important enough to warrant the construction of this early prosthetic. This big toe shows that prosthetics is as much about function as identity. For the next big revolution in prosthetics, we have to go to ancient Rome. During the Second Punic Wars, General Marcus Sergius lost his right hand on the battlefield. This would generally mean you're unable to enter another battle, as he needed two hands to hold a sword and a shield. But he instead had an iron hand fashioned for him, so he could still hold up his shield, so he could still perform his function, so he kept his identity as a general. With his prosthetic, Marcus Sergius would continue to serve in a long military career. Iron hands, such as the one the Roman general wore, would continue to be used for thousands of years up until the late Middle Ages. Knights who lost their hand would often purchase an iron prosthetic. It can be attached to the armor or to the limb with leather straps, and were often handcrafted to fit the individual wearer. Usually knights employed the same blacksmith for their armor as for their prosthetic. And while these hands could be used to carry a shield, their main purpose was to hide the fact a person was disfigured. It was much more a personal and cultural tool rather than a practical one. It allowed the wearer to retain his identity as a knight and a warrior. But such iron prosthetics were only for the wealthy. Peasants had to deal with crutches. But outside of the battlefield there was the wooden pack and a hook hand. Yes, they are real. While fiction has made them the staple of pirates, and sure, some pirate amputees probably did have them, they were actually not all that common. To attach such a peg or to attach a hook hand, you would need a professional surgeon who would know how to properly cut the limb. But surgeons were uncommon on ships, so the vast majority of pirates did not have a hook hand or peg leg. But let's consider the fact that iron hands, wooden pegs and hook hands were used for thousands of years that they were used from the Roman Empire all the way to the end of the Middle Ages, showing just how slowly medicine progressed. Unlike amputations, see my video on that by pressing the link in the top right corner, unlike amputations where advancements were made incrementally, prosthetics advanced far slower. The next major advances would come from a doctor named Ambroise Paré in the 16th century. He created a hinged prosthetic hand and a leg with a locking knee joint. This allowed the wearer to bend their knee and elbow, allowing them to sit normally. If you wanted to stand up again, you could lock the knee and arm in place so it wouldn't bend anymore, allowing you to walk normally. These were invented in the 16th century, but what is shocking is that this invention is still common in modern prosthetics even though they were invented nearly 500 years ago. Up to modern day, these prosthetics saw only small improvements. Although this is not to say that advancements were negligible. Improvements such as a prosthetic being attached through suction, aluminium prosthetics so the wearer didn't have to drag a heavy metal leg or arm around, and the most amazing of them all, a hand which could be locked into different positions to allow the user to hold objects in their prosthetic hand, such as a fork for eating. But it would take until 1861 for the next major advancement. The hanger limb, invented by the first amputee of the United States' Civil War, James Hanger. James's prosthetic limb was noiseless, but very similar to the ones of Ambroise Paré. What made this leg so different was its affordability. This is the first prosthetic leg which was available to tens of thousands of US soldiers who lost their leg during the Civil War. James Hanger even founded a company which produces prosthetic limbs to this day, named Hanger Incorporated. And while most medicine was up and coming and advanced the field of amputations tremendously, 
prosthetics did not see much improvements until finally in the 1970s. Inventor Isidro Martinez made a huge impact on the history of prosthetics when he developed a low limb prosthesis. His prosthesis was revolutionary because it is the first which did not try to replicate the motions of the human body. Instead, his artificial limb focuses on the walking pattern and reducing friction. And this is where history meets today. The story of creating artificial limbs is far from over. Scientists today are still working on improving the lives of amputees. From controlling the artificial limb with your brain, to allowing the patient to feel with their prosthetic limb, to regrowing the limb altogether. It really does appear that amputations will no longer be a problem in the future. That people will be able to feel as though they were still whole. Where a person's sense of identity is no longer impaired. A future where losing a limb will be a temporary loss. And people can keep living their life to the fullest. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. My next video will be about the tulip mania, the first financial bubble in history when you could buy a house with only a single tulip. If you want to see those and other videos as soon as they come out, press the subscribe button. I upload a new video every two weeks.